Every entrepreneur has a moment or a series of moments that leads them to become who they are meant to be. I call these moments intuitive turning points. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth, and I am the host of Intuitive Turning Points. Come join us for stories of successful entrepreneurs who have gone through the journey. These entrepreneurs have accomplished so many things in their lives. I will have best-selling authors, TEDx speakers, people who've created successful businesses as an entrepreneur. It doesn't happen overnight. And as I always say, entrepreneurship is a personal development journey, and it takes time to develop yourself into the person you're meant to be to help other people become who they're meant to be. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. My guest today is Michelle Atlas from The Money Code. She is a professional certified coach. And what she does is she empowers intuitive, creative women entrepreneurs to reclaim their self-trust so that they can create change they did not think was possible in their relationship to money, their business, and in themselves. Now, her clients increase both their income and their fulfillment in work and in life. So she's one part business owner. Uh, business mentor, rather. She's one part shadow detective, which I think is kind of cool. Um, she's one part spiritual guide and one part soul purpose midwife, bringing you into helping to birth you into your soul purpose. That's pretty awesome. So Michelle is currently writing her first book, The Sovereign Entrepreneur. It's a field guide to inspire female entrepreneurs to embrace business ownership as a path to self-ownership. She coaches and speaks internationally on the psychology of money and living resiliently. So let's welcome Michelle Atlas to the show. Michelle Atlas, welcome to Intuitive Turning Points. Hi, hi Meg. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. I always love our conversations. That they're so enlightening and interesting. And today about intuition, um, I'm excited about it because you also teach intuition. And so I think it's a wonderful opportunity for people to, to learn from two teachers of it. You yes. know, I think that's a powerful place to uh, develop your intuition from. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. So as you know, my opening question to you is what intuitive turning point moment or series of moments led you to become who you are today, this money code goddess? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's a beautiful thing to be called. I think if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So many, many things as with so many of us, right? Like it's just, you know, this lifetime of so many of us who are working intuitively and teaching intuition uh, have cultivated, you know, strengthened our own intuitive muscle and been in discovery around intuition, you know, for our, like most of our life really. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I think for me, it began, um, I'll highlight a couple of key times that really relate to my entrepreneurial trajectory, but it probably began for me as a tiny little girl before I even knew what it was, you know, um, just in terms of like the way that I sensed and felt, mm -hmm. you know, what was right or what to say or when to say it or what to do or what not to do. And, um, you know, just that sort of, um, deep knowing that came, you know, from someplace from the mystery. And, you know, when no one is really mirroring back the value of that to you growing up, you don't, it's, you don't really, it's your normal, but you don't know you have it either. Yeah. So I would say fast forward then to, I'm looking at my list here, because I made a list of all the key, <laughs> key moments in my life, but I'm going to These highly intuitive you. people, we will have lists that are pretty darn long, right? <laughs> yes. yes exactly. When it comes to intuition. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. Because some of these things are so organic that, you know, again, they're like, they get woven into everything. Right. But, right. Um, and you have to really stop and think about, you know, what was that moment? So. Yeah. Right. Right. Because so much like the life that we end up with or the business we, we end up with is the result of a lot of intuitive twists and turns that just sort of, you know, happened and when you go back and you look it's mm -hmm. fun i mean your your question which you know you let me contemplate a little bit before we jumped on here yeah um was such a fun beautiful question such a fun question because it just gave me this like geography of my own life right this 
this timeline where I saw these pivotal moments yeah. and um, how significant they were. Um, so I'll just, you know, maybe rattle off a couple of key ones and then I sure. can, you know, share whatever a detail about whatever you'd like. But yeah. um, so, you know, the first I'd say that was really as an adult, super powerful was that um, the moment I graduated from undergraduate school, I mm -hmm. wanted to go live in a yoga and meditation ashram. And my parents did not want me to. And so um, I just got this very strong hit that I better get to the bank, which was in their hometown, not where I was going to school with my hometown, but, but I wasn't going to school there and remove my money from my, own. they had, they had access to my savings account and uh, they were about to take my money out of it. So that to keep me from going to this ashram. Wow. And um, fortunately my mother told me she was going to do this. So I, um, but I, I just got this, I didn't know when or whatever. And I just got this overwhelming feeling that I should act on, you know, getting myself to this, you know, my, mm -hmm. this other city from where right. I was. And I did. And I, I had, and, you know, and so there was like transportation was available. I didn't have my own car. Someone offered to drive me. It all went smooth as anything. And sure enough, a matter of hours later, my father went to get that money, but I already had it. Oh, and so great. I was able to wow. proceed with the life I wanted for myself at age 21, 22. Wow. And I spent 12 years in that ashram steeped in yoga and meditation and spiritual practice and, and lived in India for, you know, 14 wow. months at that time. And, you know, traveled throughout the country and just had a very rich, um, you know, sort of refamilied myself, you know, in that environment and um, yeah. recreated the family I didn't really have. So that's just a huge part of my whole, you know, scheme of my life. And that was just me really, it was, it was hard to do that because I, I knew it would hurt my parents. Um, yep. But I knew in my, and getting that deep solar plexus guidance place that it was right, that I yep. had to take a stand for myself. And then, wow. after, yeah, so that's so interesting. Yeah. And so in, in case people didn't know <laughs> it used to be you had to go directly to the, the one branch where you deposited your money and do everything there there wasn't this there wasn't this national atm thing you know so you just had to go to the branch and get your money out so um it right. just it just made me think of like those days because i remember i do remember those days as well you know and the, yeah, that was the only way you could do banking so yeah, so, there was no such thing as online banking, yeah. just, you know, switching it. No, no, I had to so be driven this, like an hour. <laughs> yeah, and this is like, a, this is a, a, an example of how intuition will drive you to do something that you physically have to create, you have to maneuver and make it happen. You know, like when your intuition tells you, you know, move, move to California, <laughs> you know, um, that's, you know, you're like, well, that's a big deal. You know, that's a lot of things that line up for me to be able to do that. But, you know, it's a similar thing. It's like, okay, we need to do this. If if I want to create the life that's in my heart, then I have to make this move. And it's going to cause problems with family members. But ultimately, you were yeah. listening so deeply to your own heart yeah. and the calling of your soul. And that's, you know, where that intuition comes from. And you knew you needed to go in that pathway, even though everyone around you was like, that's ridiculous, you know? So, yes. yeah, and they, yes. if there's there people will judge your your intuitive knowings and the things that you follow. Um, they will. They so. can really rock the boat, right? Yeah. And um, they they don't always, but they can really rock the boat. And mm -hmm. I think that um, for me, the difference when I think about the common thread running through all these different experiences, and I'll share a couple of others, is that it, every time the decision, you know, there, there are consequences to every decision we make and in each case and don't make. And in these cases, there was always this sense of doing the thing was the expansive thing to do. It was like where the opening was doing the, you know, not doing it. I would have been, yes, I would have been a good girl. I wouldn't have had to deal with, um, you know, the, the stress, the grief, the, the tension, the judgment, but, I would have felt imprisoned also. I would have been living a life that would have been in a very small box. And so that's how, you know, when I teach decision-making to my clients, 
part of it is that visceral intuitive sense of where is the opening, not just so that you're making decisions, not just based on logic, although logic is fine, you know, considering logical. Sure, things, absolutely. Course, I like, to, I like things, to balance them out, you right. know, but yeah. Right, right. It's not about casting logic to the wind, but yes. it is about, you know, really also sensing in because sometimes logic fools us. And, you know, um, I can give an example of that too in a moment, but I have all kinds of examples. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so sometimes logic does fool us. Yeah. Um, and what's an example of that? The body, that, that sense of like, where's the yes? Yes. There, I mean, the, the real, mm -hmm. like the, the real yes that where, you know, we talk about something feeling so right or, right. you know, guided, um, yeah. And this brings up that the thought about, you know, when you do something that someone else wants you to do or expects you to do, um, how much harder it is on your system. I know that's something that I did. And I, I did it not yes. because I did it uh, because I wasn't really listening to my intuitive at that point. Um, it was me pleasing others was way more important. Uh, particularly my parents. And so I was like, okay, the corporate job, the, you know, this is what you do. You get married, you do the, all the stuff the right way. And I think a lot of, I know a lot of people get stuck in this gap and basically turn off their own intuitive inner voice and just go through the motions. And a part of what happened for me, um, and there were multiple reasons why I got sick, but I got really sick. I mean, I was to the point where I had to leave corporate jobs because I, I you know, was basically disabled. So, um, so at any rate, it. and that's good to, it, it was good for me to learn that about myself, but if you don't have to go through all of that <laughs> and you yeah. can yeah, right, right, follow right. and just, you know, do right. the thing that was in your soul to do, you know? Right. Um, yeah. So, so you're in this ashram, you're there for, right. you said 12 years. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan on it, but that's how long, you know, it felt right to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then after was your next turning point, like, I'm sure yeah. there was a turning point to, to for you to leave the ashram life. That's, there was, you know, yeah, a huge, so true. different sort of life that, right. And that, that was intuitive also where, um, not for any negative reason at all, but just, you know, I just got to the point where intuitively I felt like I was in a marriage also. I had gotten married there that, and it was not the right marriage at all. Yeah. And I just intuitively felt like it was, I was ready to leave both the marriage and the community mm -hmm. um, simultaneously. And I, I just, there was like this deep roar inside that was ready to really claim me, claim the life that I knew I was intended to live and yeah. really do. And I, I had this sense after all those years that it nourished me so deeply. I had this sense that there was, that there was a lot of spiritual nourishment back then, but I had the sense that there was a lot of psychological and emotional stuff on the back burner that needed to be attended to through things yeah. like therapy, uh -huh. you know, and other modalities, um, that other than meditation and yoga, you know, right. and chanting. And um, I felt ready to do that. I felt like ready to kind of, I felt like I could handle getting into that really messy, sometimes very painful human mm -hmm. domain, human dimension yeah. to growth. And that's what I, so that really propelled me, um, you know. This is a good example of really looking at your holistic system. Right. You know, right. Like I've been servicing the spiritual for so long and you've developed that like so 12 years of development. That's like amazing. Right. And then now it's like, wait a minute, I have some emotional, mental, uh, maybe even some physical, you know, that there's, that there's these other parts of the system that, Hey, this is what I need to, to tend to. And so listening to that voice to go take care of those parts of you is I think super important as well. And so you um, start working on yourself and all of that. And, and how did you, was there a, a pivotal moment for you to, to become money, get into the money code? Um, right. Oh, yeah. So uh, basically, um, it, it all happens in such an interesting way. So this yeah. brings us to one of the most intuitive um, moments that really affected the trajectory of my life happened um, several, quite a few years into my time on my own out of the ashram, you know, I'm just living as a single person. Mm -hmm. 
and I'd left the marriage, left the ashram, was, you know, working in a job that was like under my capacity, but, you know, just acclimating, paying the bills. Mm -hmm. And um, many, quite a few years uh, after that, I um, just really felt that it was time to leave. I was in these jobs that were like, I was coaching and I was helping people with uh, disabilities of different kinds. And the work was really meaningful for years. And then I began to feel like, um, and I, I wasn't compensated well for it though. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the, the balance was really off for years. Yeah. So I got to a point where I was really ready to um, share a deeper level of my gifts. I sensed there was something deeper I was really supposed to be bringing to this world. Uh-huh. And um, I wanted to, you know, put the cumulative training and cumulative life experiences and lessons and everything I'd been through together into something unique that was my own offer. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a period where I I had some family money um, Mm -hmm. that cushioned me for a little while. And I just took the leap. It was another really intuitive. People were like, are you nuts? And I just had to, I was starting to feel like it was making me sick to be Mm -hmm. in this where I was constantly compensating for something that wasn't happening in these workplaces Mm. and overdoing. And so I just, I left, um, I just literally left, (laughs) I jumped off the cliff. And um, (laughs) when I did, I went through a period of, you know, I had a cushion and I went through a period um, of a few years of just sort of working, you know, consulting here and consulting there, but just really not making a living. Right. And then what happened for me was, um, I'm going to give you the short version of this to answer your question, but it's very powerful because someone shared with me a book on that was a story of 30 years of research of one of the great resilience researchers in this world who has passed since. Mm-hmm. Um, so somebody who had, you know, been on Oprah and, you know, one of the, the real well-known people. And um, when I read, it was during these few years where I was trying to find my next thing. And I recognized my life story in the, in this kind of resilience hierarchy and all the findings in this research about what mm-hmm. strengthens a person, re, person's resilience, what, you know, who, who's resilient, who's not all this kind of really meaningful information. And I, I didn't even have the word before I said, Oh my God, that's how I've, survived and thrived through so much, so much hardship with family and this and that. Um, And why I've always grown through all these difficulties is because I'm resilient, you know, and I I have resilient sort of innate resiliency capacities. And I thought, wow, this, I think this is my next thing. I think I want to be able to coach on that to help people, you know, really Mm -hmm. cultivate, name it and, and grow it, (laughs) their resilience. So I was walking through, so I got this I mean, long story short, I got this overwhelming feeling to contact the author and see if I could become masterful in his work. Uh-huh. And um, so I did, and he answered the phone and I I got, he was a New York Times bestselling author and I thought I was calling his office, you know, and he, <laughs> I just got him. Well, and, who is it by the way? Oh, it's Al Siebert, Al Siebert. Um, and okay. he passed in 2009, actually, okay. but this was back then. And I, we had a real nice talk and we didn't commit to anything. We just had this nice chat. And then he kind of said, well, you know, think about it. Let me know, so, you know, see where you see where you're at. And he had, and he had certified less than 12 people in the entire world in his work because he didn't want many people p- contacted him, but he didn't, he refused to certify people who had only an academic interest or academic understanding of his work. He wanted people who had lived it. He wanted people who, who understood, you know, in their sort of soul, what it's well, that's like. Brilliant. To, <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> to leave a legacy that way. So you don't, it doesn't, the stuff doesn't get so watered down and distilled into something that wasn't meant to begin. Correct. To be, to or begin intellectualized with. or just right. to be, you know, intellectual, you know, kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so that was very impressive to me too, because, you know, every time you turned away somebody, you turned away money as well. Yeah. And so, right. An investment in, in becoming certified and trained. And so we didn't, he didn't tell me whether, you know, what it was yay or nay or whatever, but about a year later, I was still sort of needed some space. And about a year later, one June, I was walking through my living room. I'll, I'll never forget it. And I got this overwhelming intuition, just overwhelming out of nowhere. It was summer that I should call him immediately and um, see if he's willing to certify me and if we could get this going. And it was just 
So, I mean, it was like a screaming, just a, it's so clear. So I did, I called and again, he answered the phone. He sounded really tired and I didn't understand. We had a, even a, a more meaningful, you know, really kind of a beautiful, intimate conversation about all kinds of things that we, our perspective on life, what was happening in the world. And, you know, this topic of resilience that we were both passionate about. And he told me that um, he could tell without even having met me, you know, personally that I had absolutely lived it, that he would love to work with me, that he, he would absolutely certify me and I could be one of those people. And I was oh, thrilled. And we, we came, that is up, thrilling. we came up with, a, it was such a wonderful thing. And I, I thought he was going to be a lifelong mentor and friend. And we came up with an initial plan you know, that I would, you know, begin doing this and then I'd reconnect and we would begin, you know, he'd begin mentoring me and we'd, you know, ex- whatever my questions I'd get to ask and all, whatever the process was right. going to be. And I, I just hung up feeling like, you know, really plugged in and, and like really um, partnered with him. And three weeks later, he, he rapidly and unexpectedly came out of remission uh, with cancer and died. <sighs> And he didn't know that was, no one knew that was going to happen. Oh my goodness. Right, right. Oh, wow. And, but my intuition who, that got me plugged in like that. So Mm -hmm. then, you know, um, and his wife really wanted to carry on his work and she knew that I, you know, so I was the last person he gave his personal blessings to, to become certified in his work. And he had left a colleague of his to, to, to provide the support that he would have. So I, I immediately dove in for after I it was just devastating when I learned about this. Oh my and gosh! Then, you know, yeah, it was, it was just I, I finally, you know, after all this time, figured out what I was. I thought, do. I thought, yeah, I thought this was dialed in, and you know, and, and let alone that your your mentor that you really was so so excited to be with passes on. You know, it's just. It was really intense. something I, I sort of, you know, I remember like that afternoon curling up for, a, you know, like a half an hour in the fetal position and just like uh-huh. saying, okay, like <laughs> this, this what? is just, you know, right, exactly. <laughs> what, exactly. What do I do now? <gasps> right. yeah, so, right. so you end up working with his, his mentor, his, his, or, or um, his, yeah, uh, his colleague, his protege or colleague. Yeah. And I spent 10 months studying his work and learning it inside and out. And then what happened was, um, you know, much to my, and this is leading to how I ended up doing the money work because this isn't the money work, but it led me to the money work because what happened was much to my absolute surprise and totally serendipitously, once I knew his work, I got contacted by the Office of Personnel Management in Washington, the US, the federal government personnel office, and invited to come teach his work to top federal government leaders in the, during the Obama administration. That was a shock. Wow. <laughs> and so I, of course, I was thrilled. I said, yes, it was just wow. amazing. So I got to and I met some amazing people and, um, you know, uh, just got to do some really cool work that, I, you know, no one could have known in a million years. And so, wow. um, so that was really special. And, and then um, the only reason I'm not still doing that is they mandated that a neuroscientist teach the class I was teaching and I'm not a neuroscientist. Right. So, you know, I couldn't, it was kind of like, you know, we love you, but we're not allowed to keep hiring you and, you know, that kind of thing. And so yeah. that, um, and that was okay. So what happened though, before I left there, which was also part of this trajectory is that um, the head of the office of personnel management said, well, you know, part of my contract was coaching people and they wanted mm-hmm. me to have more coaching credentials than I did. Oh, and so yes. they asked me to please, before they knew they weren't going to be able to keep using me because I wasn't mm-hmm. a neuroscientist. They right. asked me to please go get a particular kind of coaching credential mm-hmm. and um, something that, you know, was um, accredited by the international coaches federation. And there are okay. many choices, um, but they wanted me to just have, you know, to, to get a certain type. And so, I, I, I thought, wow, okay, well, that must, you know, th- that's guidance, you know, because right. I, I didn't know what to do next. And I'm kind of being told I should get this credential. Yeah, so I, I <laughs> it's nice when the guidance comes from outside of you. Someone says, do this next. Okay, got it. Right, well, <laughs> and it, it resonates, you know, you're leaning keep, into it. <laughs> no, it resonated, it, it did resonate. And it also, yeah. and they, I thought I was going to enable me to keep working with them. Um, so I went and I invested in a very, you know, expensive 10 month deep dive transformational uh, coaching credential. And um, 
and came out the other end and, and not, and I had chosen, I had a bunch of choices. I chose the one that resonated for me. And when I came out of that program and told, they asked me which one I had done. And when I told them, they said, Oh my God, that's the gold standard. I had no idea, no idea. <laughs> so I chose randomly, the gold standard. Yeah, uh-huh, randomly. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So that was another. And then they, and then after that, they said, Oh my God, we can't hire you anymore. <laughs> So oh my gosh! Wow. So, so you kept just getting, you know, in in essence, kind of pushed out of things. So you eventually just had to do your own thing, correct? And correct. you wanted to do that anyway, correct? That's you really kind of like you just came full circle with correct. the path. And it, what I think this is an example of is that you went through this whole pathway to develop yourself to this point that you could create your own thing. And do yes. it in a way that was so much more powerful than had you done it originally, you know, yes, I agree. like without all this experience, without working on these government contracts, without, you know, like that's an amazing trajectory, you know? And so I think people get really frustrated. And I know I was at this point too, where you get frustrated with the path, but what you're doing is you are being developed to do the thing that you have come here to do. And that yes. doesn't, you, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, you can't just, and a lot of, there are a lot of like 20 somethings in the world that are creating these, these programs and they haven't developed themselves yet. That's right. You know, and that, but that's part of their development. So I'm not, right. you know, not no, dissing right. them, right. you know, it's part of their development, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's to go easier on yourself as you're going through the process yes, of developing yourself to accept like, okay, this is pretty cool what I get to do, you know, and that it's, it's yeah. leading to, I don't know what yet, but you know, it's just your life. You'll get led along the path intuitively from thing to thing, yes. and it'll come through opportunities and experience. Because that's a big thing people don't understand about intuition is that it when you open up your intuition, it opens up opportunities. Like they just yes. magnetize yes. towards you because you've said yes to your gifts, your yes. skills, your talents, your abilities. I want to do this thing. They're like, okay, yeah. we've got some training for you. <laughs> so, exactly. so that's really, really awesome. I love that you went through this whole pathway. And so yeah. now you're doing the money code. And I have done a, a session with you um, and I've taken your quiz. And I mean, wow, it's just really powerful what you were able to see and know about uh, how to help me to the next level um, when it comes to money and my relationship with it. Um, because that's something that a lot of us, I think we all, I don't want to use the word struggle, but we all deal with it. <laughs> we all deal with it. You know, we can't not deal with it. So, yeah, thank you so much, Meg. I, I'm so, it was so, so much fun and so great to do it with you. Um, it's so satisfying when I can zone in, you know, and kind of drill down like that, um, mm-hmm. you know, and help just sort of turn the lights on. I think that's really for all of us. Um, I do this work because I, and that was, and to be honest, that's another credential I ended up getting even after the one that I just mentioned where I'm, mm-hmm. um, I use, I didn't author this system, but I use archetypes to kind of open the door to a person's emotional relationship to money mm-hmm. and, you know, what's really going on in the shadowy realms and behind the scenes when it comes to your relationship to money and your mm-hmm. worth and your sense of worthiness and all of those hotbed areas that women navigate, like, you know, permission and deservedness and, you know, yeah. the right to shine and the right to charge and all of these mm. kinds of things. And we're, you know, charging what you're, what we're worth kind of a thing. Right. Um, it can be really challenging for women. I know it has very been very challenging, challenging for me. for intuitive, sensitive, creative women. Yeah especially for some reason, uh, we also I believe we who are more intuitive and sort of very deep, I've noticed it, we all we also seem to carry a little bit of an extra dose of self doubt from you know, someone who's maybe more of a left brain kind of go getter type, right. not, 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 you know, not neither is better or worse than the other, but I just noticed yeah. that distinction. And yeah. Um, yeah, so the money work has just been so beautiful and powerful because um, for female, for for intuitive, you know, deep women entrepreneurs, uh-huh. um, it's it's the one thing that we're, we're all we're gifted. We tend to be, you know, we who have 
and access to our intuition and our sensitivity and our creativity, we also tend to bring really special gifts to, to the table in whatever service or whatever product we're offering. And we cannot fully express without um, empowering our relationship to money. And the piece that you know people focus on strategy when they want to do that. And I started out that way too, but it wasn't sustainable. I'd mm-hmm. it's like a yo-yo diet. I'd like follow somebody's advice on how to strategize around money and then I'd like fall off the wagon again. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> and I, I just, you know, it was because there was this whole emotional domain that, you know, was like under below sea level. Uh-huh. I needed to have like, you know, the curtain pulled back. And then it's like once you start to work with that, now you're really, you know, now mm-hmm. you're really um, cooking with oil, you know, yeah. <laughs> make changes. You know? High quality oil, says the That's chef. Quality organic oil. <laughs> the organic extra virgin olive oil. Right. Um, yeah. So, wow. So you've come through a lot and you have used your yes. intuition all along the way and you teach it in your programs and you have a number of offerings. And I know um, like we've mentioned the quiz that they can get on your website. Um, yes. Can you tell people where to go to get the quiz to learn how to work with you one-on-one? And I know you've got a free challenge coming up, um, which you're probably going to run again, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, <yeah. laughs> okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Sure. sure. So um, my money archetype personality quiz is the freebie on my website, which is michelleatlas.com. Michelle with two L's, M-I-C-A-G-L-L-E, Atlas like the map, A-T-L-A-S.com. Yes. And uh, and that's just in the right margin. And you, you'll get automated. You can take it online. It takes about 10 minutes. You'll get automated results right away. And then if you want to take that uh, deeper, there are a number of ways to do that. You can come into my private Facebook group, free private Facebook group, The Sovereign Entrepreneur. You can do that right away also. Um, But I have a free 60-minute training on the archetypes in Mm -hmm. the the group. Um, You can also reach out directly to me to learn more about my uh, courses and my private packages. I'm about to run a um, free four-day challenge that is really a deep, beautiful dive into what I call your soul prosperity theme, uh-huh. which is that uh, goal that I call it the golden thread that runs through your life story that really holds the key to money, not just money flow, very much money flow, but also fulfillment. Because for we who are sensitive and deep, yeah. we can't sustain money flow, no matter how much is flowing, if it's also if it's not also fulfilling and feeding our souls, we'll get depleted, even if we're making money. So mm, we need both. Good point. And so um, I do this beautiful free challenge in the in the fa- in the Sovereign Entrepreneur Facebook group, which you are very welcome. I, I you know warmly welcome you to join. Um, where I take you through a beautiful process of really discovering Mm -hmm. what I found. I created this because I myself for years thought, you know, sort of, sort of working in my soul's deepest calling, but not totally. Not fully. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're doing a lot of what you're really gifted at, but you're still feeling that little edge of fatigue and it's like, it's still, and I, I realized there was a, a way deeper level for myself. Mm-hmm. Like there was, I was, I wasn't totally saying what I wanted to say. I wasn't totally bringing forth what I really, you know, the deepest wisdom I had to offer. And there was a deeper layer. And I realized that it had to do with everything I'd learned and mined from everything I'd been through. Yeah. So I help people kind of really understand what this is for them in this and it really activates money flow with much greater ease um, oh, once you great. understand your soul prosperity theme. Oh, that's um, great. It's really a powerful thing. So anyway, that's the free challenge. I love it. And the Sovereign Entrepreneur is the title of your book that you're working on as well, right? Yes. Yes. yes okay, awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, yeah. About that as well. That's a big birthing, writing a, a book. You yeah. Know, it's not just fluff that is deep and really, it's really a big, it's like giving birth to quintuplets. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's such a process. So. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being on the show today. You had such a great insight about intuition and how it leads you event you and it's not even eventually it's the thing that you want to do is opening for you and you do have to develop yourself along the way and your intuition is going to lead you through that development right I love what you said Meg about that that it's how you become you know a wise service provider not just a textbook service provider all of those different Mm -hmm. phases that you talked about going through they're so valuable 
Yeah, exactly. So thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your wisdom. Um, Yay. And you can find her at michelleatlas.com and go take that money quiz. That's really, really good. And uh, to learn more about the challenge, I'm going to be sending uh, an email out on your behalf um, because I love your work and I I just want to, I want to get your work out there to as many people as possible. So I just think sharing is so super important that there's so many different ways that people can heal so many different levels that we need to heal from, you know, um, and money is one of the big ones here on planet earth. <laughs> that we Absolutely. Have to navigate. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate oh, you. Yeah. My great pleasure. Thank you so much for watching Intuitive Turning Points. I want you to go ahead and like the video and please subscribe to my channel and then ring the bell to get notifications of future episodes so that you can get the latest in Intuitive Turning Points, stories of successful entrepreneurs. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth. Get your dose of inspiration right here on Intuitive Turning Points. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you.